it's done welcome to my diary entry for today in this video i'm going to be showing you how to sew together this double breasted jacket in my previous video i showed you how to make the pattern for this jacket so be sure to check that video out first before watching this video now this fabric is so soft and it came out exactly the way i wanted it to i did however customize the bottom placement and that's because after fitting it on while sewing i wanted a different look so i placed the button based on the look that i wanted now in this video not only will i be showing you how i customize my button placement i will also be showing you the conventional way of putting your buttons on a double breasted jacket you're so welcome so I do have to give credit to a fellow YouTuber called Diana Dezil and that's because I used her method of sewing the lapel and the collar to give it this very clean finished look right here. So I had my way of doing it, however it needed a lot of patience and some fabric maneuvering. I found Diane's method to be simpler and easier to follow. I'll leave her name in the description box below. Now you know that one outfit that whenever you wear it, it makes you feel like you are worth more than you currently are. For me, I think this jacket is the outfit. I wore it over a dress and I felt like a star. I came back home, wore it over a pair of jeans, tank top with the buttons open and I still felt like a star. I think everyone should have this jacket in their wardrobe. So go ahead and grab all your grabbables and let's get started. Now don't forget to subscribe and then turn on your notifications so that you are aware whenever these videos go live give me as many likes as you can if you want to see more of these kind of videos from me and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below my name is ijoma and welcome to my sewing diary The materials you will need are your fabric of choice. I used about three yards of this beautiful soft plaid fabric, your lining of choice and some interface. I used about one yard of each. So I've gone ahead and used a pungy lining or what we Nigerians call a bar lining. This is because I wanted something soft and didn't want the conventional suit lining. Now the pungy lining can be very flimsy so I'll be reinforcing it with interface. If you're using a suit lining, you wouldn't need as much interface as I'll be using. So you'll also need your matching and basting thread, needle, pins, buttons, fabric scissors, measuring tape, tailor's chalk, and your completed manipulated double-breasted jacket pattern. I'll leave the full list as well as all associated links in the description box below. Cut your fabric according to the instructions on the pattern. You'll be cutting all lining pieces on your lining fabric. In my case, this includes interface as well. And all main and facing pieces on the main fabric.
outer jacket together first. So matching notches, connect your center front and side front pieces at the style line with pins. I've also gone ahead and basted a few inches above my bust point, past my bust point to a few inches below my bust point on each side to keep the fabric together as it tends to get a little tricky around that side. When you're done, stitch together with a half inch seam allowance, pressing open your seam allowance afterwards. I will be cleaning the raw edges later on once I am done with the outer and inner shell just so that I don't lose my seam allowance. So please ignore all raw edges for the time being. Go ahead and tack the following notches as they are crucial in ensuring that you fold your lapel right and attach your collar correctly too. Also fold and press your lapel down like so. Join your centre back piece to your side back pieces with pins and matching notches as well. I also basted the slight curve for the back too. Go ahead and sew together with a half inch seam allowance, pressing your seam allowance open afterwards. Pin your sleeves together by placing right side of the lower sleeve on right side of the upper sleeve while also ensuring that you're matching the corresponding back and front sides together. Sew all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance and press open your seam allowance afterwards. Connect your front and back pieces together at the side and shoulder by placing right side on right side, pinning and sewing all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance. Press open all seam allowances afterwards. And now it's time to attach the sleeves. So first of all, run a loose stitch about 1 8 of an inch away from the edge of the sleeve head, starting about halfway on one side of the sleeve head, through the crown and ending halfway on the other side of the sleeve head. When you're done, Pull the loose stitch at each side to gather the sleeve head a little bit and distribute the excess round so that you end up with a very nicely curved sleeve head. With right side of the sleeve on right side of the bodice and ensuring that the notches of the sleeve match the front and back bodies, recall we made two for the back and one for the front. First of all, locate your side seam notch on your sleeve. Now, if you did not notch this before stitching, simply fold your sleeve in two from the crown and notch the bottom fold. And then pin this notch to the side seam of your bodice. You'll be pinning on the wrong side. And also pin your crown to the shoulder seam. Then go ahead and pin the sleeve round the armhole. Adjusting the sleeve head with your basting stitch to gather it where it seems bigger than the armhole. So you want to make sure that you are evenly distributing the sleeve head around the armhole for a well-rounded sleeve insert. You also don't want any gathering to show on the right side of the garment. So make sure that you are distributing the garters very well. When they fit well together, Go ahead and pin them together and then baste the sleeve and the bodies together at a quarter of an inch from the edge. This will make sure that your pin sleeve does not move because you definitely want it to stay in place. Then go ahead and stitch with a half inch seam allowance, smoothing all gathers as you sew. So because your gathering stitch was done at one eighth of an inch from the sleeve edge, the gathering will pretty much remain at that section when you're sewing. But you also want to make sure that no gathers show on the right side of the fabric, so make sure you fill it through as you're sewing. When you're done, remove the basting stitches and then set the shell aside while we get the lining and facing pieces up to speed. 
Before setting it aside, however, you want to try it on and make sure that you like the fit, making any adjustment where necessary. If you've used pungy or aba lining like me, first press your interface to your corresponding pieces, some of which are not in this clip, making sure you have left and right pieces where needed. Now I don't know why I didn't cut my lining sleeve in interface as well, but please do so if you're using the same kind of lining. You should also cut your facings on interface as well and press them together with the main pieces. I did not do this because of how thick my fabric is, I didn't want it any thicker. With right side on right side and matching notches like you did the main, join your front lining and facing pieces at the style line with pins. Sew all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance, pressing open afterwards and then set this aside. On your back lining piece, Fold it again after pressing the interface on it and transfer the dart points with your pins like so. And then sew your darts, pressing them to the center back afterwards. With right side on right side, join your back facing to the back lining with pins and sew together with a half inch seam allowance pressing your seam allowance open afterwards. Then with right side on right side, join your front and back pieces at the side and top with pins, matching all notches. Sew all pinned areas with a half inch seam allowance, pressing open your seam allowance afterwards as well. Making sure you have two opposite sides Pin and sew the side seam of each sleeve piece and press open your seam allowance afterwards. Then go ahead and join the sleeve to the corresponding armhole like you did the main. Only this time you will not need to run a loose stitch at the sleeve head first because you took out the excess in the pattern making process so the sleeve should fit easily. Go ahead and baste the sleeve to the armhole and then sew together with a half inch seam allowance, removing all basting stitches afterwards. When you're done, clean all raw edges of seam allowances sewn only on your main and lining pieces and set them aside. With right side on right side, sew the center back of your under collar together with a half inch seam allowance pressing your seam allowance open afterwards. At the ends, also press and fold in your half inch seam allowance towards the wrong side of the collar. Then matching notches and with right side on right side, join your under collar to your main jacket. Using your pattern as a reference, you'll be starting from point E from one side to the other and also starting from the fold on the seam allowance pressed on at the sides of the collar. So first pin round and then baste at one eighth of an inch from the edge. When you're done, Sew all pinned areas together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance according to the pattern. Also sew the top collar to the lining jacket in the same manner. With right side on right side, place your main and lining jacket together and then pin and stitch only the top collars together with a half inch seam allowance. Press your seam allowance open afterwards, trim to a quarter of an inch and then under stitch all the seam allowance to the under collar. With right side on right side again, pin and stitch the lapel of the lining and main jacket together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance on both sides and according to the pattern. You should stop half an inch away from the end of the lining fabric. When you're done, 
understitch the seam allowance like so. So below the breaking point, understitch the seam allowance to the lining. Above the breaking point, understitch the seam allowance to the main jacket. So to complete the collar and the top of the lapel, pin the remainder of the collar and top lapels of the main and lining fabrics together, right side on right side, and stitch with a half inch seam allowance. Now you will need to stitch them one at a time, carefully stopping and starting at the point where they connect. Trim the excess when you're done and turn your jacket inside out, giving it a good press afterwards. Next, join the two collars together at the bottom seam allowance by first pinning and then stitching with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. This is to keep the collar from separating. Turn your jacket to the right side and give it another good press. Okay, so we're almost done. We now need to bag the jacket and we'll be starting with the sleeves. So with your jacket on the right side, make sure that the lining is inserted properly in the jacket. Then go ahead and locate and notch your under seam on your main sleeve by folding it in two like so. Grab the right side of your lining and main jacket sleeve bottom together by going in from between the jacket and the lining sleeves like so and making sure that the notch you made on the main sleeve aligns with the under seam on the lining. Pin the lining and main sleeves together like so. And then stitch these with a half inch seam allowance. Do this on both sides and turn your jacket to the right side. You'll notice that the lining and the main sleeve folds in at the bottom. We'll then complete the hem in almost the same manner. First, take off some stitches on one side of the side seam of your lining. I took off about 5 inches in length. Now you can either do this on one side of your side seam as I have done, or on your lining sleeve seam. Then go ahead and grab the right side of the hem of your main and lining pieces together from the opening made, pin and sew together with a half inch seam allowance. So you want to stitch the length of your hem one after the other and that is starting from the center back to one side first before sewing the other side. After sewing, this will cause your hem to fold in like so too. Pin the opening made on the lining together and sew short with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now to press round. So make sure the distance between the lining and actual hem on both the bodies and sleeve hem is 1 inch throughout the corresponding circumference. You can use a pin to hold it while you ensure. You need to do this before pressing round so that you have the same distance round. Now replace the button and button holes. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this twice. The first way being as a result of the fit and look I wanted after trying it on. I wanted all my buttons on one side and button holes on the other side. So I wore the jacket to determine just where I wanted my buttons placed. Two buttons will be placed close to the center front and the other two close to the style line. And the second being how you would ideally place the button of a double breasted jacket. So starting with the first, to locate the placement of the first button, this should be right below the breaking point of the roll line. So with your jacket closed, measure 
the distance of just below your breaking point to the hem and mark like so. And then measure the same distance from the hem, this time close to the style line. The bottom buttons were placed 7 inches down from the first and marked in the same manner. Transfer the marks to both sides of your front jacket. Then go ahead and sew your buttonholes and buttons. You'll be sewing 4 buttons on the inner jacket and 4 buttonholes on the outer jacket at the marks made. For the ideal placement on the outer front jacket, you'll be sewing 2 buttons and making 2 buttonholes close to the centre front. While the placement of the buttons at the inner jacket will be at the button allowance distance included in the pattern. So I've used the mock I sewed earlier to show you, so please assume that it is completely finished. At the inner jacket, first mark the distance of your button allowance from your pattern from your centre front. This is where the buttons will be sewn. Now you don't have to draw a straight line. I have only done this to show you because of how busy the fabric is. Then at the outer jacket, mark your buttonhole marks at the center front and separating the top and bottom buttonholes with your desired distance. Also mark the distance of your button allowance from the center front on the outer jacket and on the same line as the buttonhole marks made. Then go ahead and sew your buttons and also make your buttonholes. So I have just used the razor blade to cut the buttonholes. Your finished jacket should close like this. And you're done! I think my plaid fabric was a little problematic in the beginning with all the shedding. But I always feel like a star every time I wear this jacket. I was so excited that I ended up wearing it to start taking off some of my basting stitches. I hope you've enjoyed the process and I can't wait to see what you make. Now don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notification, like as much as you can and leave me a comment if you have any questions whatsoever. Until later, see ya, bye!